I V M. कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव I know what you're thinking. Is that musical crap over? Can we now talk? Yes, it's over. Please don't feel pain. Of course, this episode is full of rubbish. Uh, we try to uplift it from time to time, but it doesn't work. I want to start with a story which will introduce our guest correctly as well. You may not know this, but I am a startup entrepreneur. One of the I would almost be a unicorn today if you look at it from 30, 40 years back. 1986 ki baat hai. I was a young 14-year-old boy, and I came up with this idea for a library in the building, basically a comic library for comics, and it was a fantastic idea ahead of its time. I was doing really well for the first three. days and then the wahi brothers stuck or rather struck what they did is they started borrowing stuff and not returning it they didn't understand the concept of a library they just took and went on to they both of them have uh, seats in parliament so it makes sense but they destroyed my library took away all the comics never returned anything they started their own library franchise across the world over 42 cities across the globe right now they are multi millionaires so the startup idea worked it just worked for the wrong person but today to advise me and you on how to do well at startups and perhaps how to further your career and how to make money and feel good about yourself and self esteem and wear the right type clothes in public whether spandex works in a meeting or not all this will be answered by two wonderful people and i don't have to refer to their names by looking at a sheet because i know names by heart i'm not that old and that stupid and i wish i could find the right sheet cuz i always have something else this is a very balanced sheet from last week are you looking for finance products and services that can enhance your personal finance experience are you looking for a space to talk about your financial product or service And are you looking for a crisp talk show where the conversation is all about money? Well, your search ends here. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta, and I'm host of the Paisa Paisa podcast. And I invite you for the conversation about your personal finance on each Monday on the IVM Podcast app or the website or on any podcast streaming platforms. See you, folks. Oh uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, the names are Varun Bio and Sushita Bio. Obviously, that's not their real name. That's just the bio attached to the names. Uh, let's introduce them. Varun and Sujita, can you please come? Ah, miraculously appear on screen, looking tired, bored, irritated. It's magic. And I'm it's magic. <laughs> and I'm I'm jaded. Uh, interrupt me anytime you want to, but I have to quickly just introduce you for those eight people out of the fifteen that listen who don't know you properly because you guys are very much part of the IBM family. So let's face it, it's a waste of time. Uh, Varun Dugirala, and I practice the name all day yesterday while shaving and gargling. Is one of the leading conversationalists in the business. Huge word. Personal development and create. the landscape okay you've already lost me he co-founded the glitch in 2009 and has since helped grow it to one of the leading creative agencies in the country global ad giant wpp acquired it in 2018 which means he's sitting on trillion dollars he alone can take care of the fiji islands i mean on a weekend uh, he hosts one of india's most popular business podcast and we say most popular but you know at the end of the day it's not right for the family to say my son is best but this way it is advertising is dead it's been on for many years so obviously is good and uh, think fast Uh, which is too quick for me. Uh, he also has his audio blog, the Varun Dugi Show, and writes a weekly newsletter called Unschooled. So a lot of irreverence and making fun of himself. Very rare to see in this country of people pushing their chests out and pointing to their lower body and saying, "Look at my legs." His first book, Everything Is Out of Syllabus, is coming out February two thousand and twenty-two, and is hit number one. on the creativity and entrepreneurship best seller charts without being released which is unbelievable like nobody is dreaded but it's still number 1 which is the way uh, i think putin does business in russia um varun's upcoming book is out on amazon.in please folks go and buy it i think that plug is necessary three times in the show at least and now we move to the beautiful sushita am i allowed to say beautiful or will there be a case <laughs> no, file no. No, there will I, be no case this, file i have this doctor friend who makes these sex jokes he's an elderly gentleman lovely guy and all that but he makes these sex jokes and now that he knows me better they they more and more and there always girls in the room and I'm petrified because i don't know any of them you know and they're all giggling but it's also part of the hierarchy where you giggle when the alpha boss you know says what he says and it's also on the line where it's funny charming and it's also could be construed as you know crossing the line or i got to tell you i'm really scared so i try not to laugh i go so i'm <laughs> They are funny, Sujit. I'm sorry, I interrupted your fabulous story. You graduated with a degree in economics. I must say, Varun never mentioned his uh, college uh, applications and all that. You seem to have a little bit of an ego, if you don't mind me saying. And you worked with Viscra from the Commonwealth Games. Bloody hell! 
straight i the degree in economics is straight to wiscraft from the commonwealth games as in the commonwealth games which which one the one that suresh kalmadi made famous yes unfortunately that oh, one scandal please google it folks the bbc oh you worked at the bbc as a digital and brand marketer for bbc entertainment india and you launched which is what we are talking about lbb lbb is just to give it this full form while i quickly find it L- little black book there you go well done sushita well done little black book and it's doing really well uh you connect 22 million users with 60000 is this true these figures or we just made them up because they sound too good all legit 60000 man. brands i'm i'm scared i mean i'm, I'm such a bad host i doubt my my guess <laughs> whoever does that enabling emerging and local brands to get discovered which is great for people listening to the show who want to move their business forward she's the person for you or little black book is the place for you sushita has been on oh let's get this forbes india and Asia's 30 under 30 list. That's uh, under 30 top 30 earners Asia wide. Varun, तूने क्या किया? You got acquired, but you're not mentioned here. She's pushed you yeah. off the podium, beta. I come back, got fight out. back, got pushed fight out. back, fight back. Woman power and all. I'm that. a podcaster now. You're a podcaster. You're the you become the Rahul Gandhi of uh, this uh, uh, startups in a sense. You started really <laughs> well. I'm just kidding, of course. Both are super successful. So Chitra has been on Forbes India and Asia. Uh, Forbes World. What is W Power? World Power? Women Power. This it's like this like coveted list of. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> just no, no, just no, no, ignore. No. Ignore all of these guys. I'm so no, sorry. No, I, don't, I, I can't. I can't because people. This bio. No, and no, I, no, no, no. I'll tell you why. We have mm-hmm. to normally we would because some people give us stuff like you know I joined uh, kindergarten at three and I won the potato race at four and all that scrap. <laughs> but this is important because people listening are hopefully people listening will pass the message and then they'll download and listen to this episode. Are people who want to further their business or further their brands or further themselves in this community where you guys have done so well? So I mean, under thirty is not a joke. The proof of the pudding, as we say. So Forbes Woman Power list. I mean, there's Mamta, there's Mayawati. Now she. Off the list, of course, and then there's you. I mean, that's it. Top three, but they're under 30. Well, who can argue with that? Uh, our fortune India 40 under 40. What's going on? You're cheating. You're either under 30 or under 40. How are you in both? This is typical of uh, are you from Delhi? Uh, under 90 cricket team. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know how this shit happens to me, but uh, I'm I'm grateful and humble, as you can tell. Actually, I'm also crying pro- right now because you're Why? fucking hilarious. No, but the, like the prodigies in sport, you remember the guys when you were growing up in whatever sport you were associated with, there'd be like a 12-year-old who would win the under 14 and under 16. Yeah. She would really give a complex to all the others. In swimming, I, I remember that. And like all the others would be like four years older and losing to this small, fragile chick. And obviously, just so Afridi talent. was always 19, no? Afridi was 19 till he retired. It's just turned 21. Now he's allowed to watch porno in Pakistan. Finally, poor guy. Um, all right, but this is no mean feat. Both of y'all, uh, and of course, they're very humble and so we won't know it, but super successful, super rich and giving back to the community. Every day, they both feed uh, two cats and one dog. Now, let's, uh, I've got some talking points this time. They don't trust me for the show, guys. What's going on? Because I had my own questions to ask you. Like, for example, we have written down my notes for the day. Uh, Spain, have you guys uh, read this? Spain has come up with a new law saying that uh, pets can now be family members by law. You can make them family members. Finally. Finally. That's a very good idea. Very good Imagine, idea. I, I won't take it further in India and say you can remove a family member and introduce a pet in place, you know, <laughs> sort of like a sub. That's very good. Yeah. I've got Tiger has taken your place. Yeah. And about time, what the hell do you do for me? You don't jump up and hug and kiss when we come home or anything like that. I mean, not that you should, you know, a 73 year old Masi. But uh, I digress. Let's go straight to uh, about Think Fast first. Is that where we're beginning? You tell us. This is an inspirational tale for people listening to understand how and where your ideas come from. Obviously, they're going to you know share everything, but just a little bit. So Think Fast, we'll begin so, with. So Think Fast. So Think Fast actually started because me and Suchita were having these random WhatsApp conversations um, every every second day about every startup you know, who was raising funds, what's happening in the business space, creator economy and all that stuff. And we said, we're literally doing a podcast anyway. We might as well record it, put it out there. And that's how the show became a show. Um, we just talk about what's happening um, and not trying to be boring. I think all business news in general tends to get into the boring side. We try to have a little bit of fun with it, um, trying to be a little random, but also give some form of information there. And uh, interesting enough, I'm um, I'm a lot more measured. Uh, I'm going waiting for Suchita to get into her element of, uh, of of dad jokes at some point to kind of get in. Actually, I'm the one with dad jokes. She's the one with actually decent jokes. Um, I'm, but uh, that's, uh, that's the fun of the show. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole theory about these shows also. I think which podcasts seem to change the philosophy of uh, people around the world in the sense that in a podcast, things just get happen. While otherwise, we always look in TV and radio also 
initially at, at a, like a you know what I call the insect head thorax abdomen. So it has to have like a beginning, a middle, and an end, and all that. And it was very linear and followed paths. And you have these anchors who always go back to their question, even though the organic flow of the conversation is somewhere else. They just want to go back to that question. So what I like about the podcast, I think that's what Think Fast is. There's a lot of that happening, right? It's a lot of that on the spot sort of happening, which is. Arguably, I won't give a, a number, but a hard ratio of what comes out of your heads and what translates then into what could or may or may not be successful. Um, so just give us a little bit about that, the, the feel of this organic sort of conversation that you guys have. In fact, just do it for five minutes under pressure. <laughs> 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 um, no, but, but I, I think I think also the thing that works with both Varun and me is, uh, you know, there's no like pissing contest, right? Because um, Did you uh, say the pissing con- contest. Yeah, yes. there's no pissing contest. Yeah, there's no pissing contest. All business content is a pissing <laughs> pissing contest of I know more. Um, yeah, yeah. They emasculate us like this, you know. You start using these uh, wordy words and your macho words, and then we feel like you know, and I don't know what to say. Why don't take over the conversation? She's bullying me. <laughs> So no, it's no, not no, a pissing contest. Oh, <laughs> male and female having a pissing contest would be a visual I would like to see. I don't want to brag, but there's a slight advantage. <laughs> not not in all males, but in some. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. I, I think the thing that works with uh, you know Varun and me is uh, you know one there's obviously this genuine respect uh, in in you know with each other in terms of how much we understand about each other's worlds and and I think you know Varun's obviously embedded more so in advertising all things create economy. My jam is like startups tech etc uh, etc. Et uh, and I think the jugal bandi of those two right. Like, like not really getting into each other's lanes, but um, being able to play off of each other because we're pretty comfortable with things that we know and things that we don't. Uh, and I think that that's what makes it work, man. And that's and also, a, yeah. Sorry, but that's a huge point, no? I was thinking for a second, if you've got it in your head, remember that this is my lane and my topics and these are his topics. Is that really true? Well, I mean, no, we get into each other's lanes, but I, I think that we both, uh, there's, there's certain areas we both obsessively read about anyway. So like, I read way too much about the creator economy because I'm genuinely like interested in it. So um, I'll have random facts. I think on average, every episode, I have one really random thing where my question is longer than the answer she'll kind of give because we throw questions at each other as well. Um, and she'll be like, can you finish your question so I can give a short answer to it? And then there's, there's most times that. Um, and, and, and her side, she comes like, she's the most prepared host I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, she comes with three, I remember the first recording she came with three four pages of research and I had wow. nothing I had like wow. full pressure I'm like oh, I need to prepare for the next episode like literally like a stack of pages with like exact data points and everything else I'm like I'm I'm a IVM podcast host I have no preparation <laughs> so uh, really she's spoiling the market for us we have we've kept the fruit really low hanging uh, haven't we I mean we just come on the fly whatever happens happens yeah I mean though she taught us everything we know the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true but I'm, but I'm thinking, did you tell each other beforehand that X, Y, and Z questions on this area, we're going to whatever, or it's completely, all, you know, spontaneous in the sense of you challenge her with a question and she has to just uh, take it up from there. We do a bit of prep beforehand. So for instance, we yeah. kind of put down mm-hmm. what topics we're discussing. So we, what we do is we pick a few topics to discuss every episode in brief. And then we look at one slightly longer topic to kind of dig into. Um, And we do this one section called the think fast section where we have to throw about three questions at each uh, at each other. Um, And that's where we kind of like, okay, like, throw a bit of a googly in there. Uh, we're also individually, I think, obsessed about random things. So like, um, I'm obsessed with Shark Tank. Um. So I'll get into and, that and eventually made her watch it. I made her watch Shark Tank. Yeah. All, all Shark Tanks in the, the Indian version as well. I've even seen the British one. Oops, that's the worst, is it? <laughs> yeah. The British one's called Dragon's Den, by the way. That was the origin. Yeah. It's called Dragon's Den, which is very boring. It's the most boring. A lot of imagination to go from shark to dragon. You think, yeah, yeah. it's just taking them two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. There, there's Varun back with his irrelevant facts, <laughs> yes. which he schools me on. No, but but I, I think that's what makes the conversation fun, right? Where both of us also genuinely enjoy making fun of each other um so for example you know i like screwed up the pronunciation of uh, vinyl where i called it vinyl for a whole episode uh, what do and you mean? It's not like vinyl? A, no it isn't shocker i was vinyl. literally pronouncing Who says it's vinyl? It it's vinyl. You go north of england it'll be vinyl these things change with <laughs> cultures and expressions if you go north of india and south of india and all that i mean come on cyrus should have been on that episode varun cyrus yeah. should have been on that i episode. come from a lawyer background so i will fight for vinyl what the hell <laughs> Viril, viril. Yeah. I'm a viril man. Huh? Just because yeah. I, I, I like to have these nutrition gummies all the time and uh, and Suchita believes that uh, they're boner meds. That's a part of yeah, the show. So basically every every single episode has like a boner med joke. Um, and also every episode I bring up that Varun's exactly. turning 40 in seven months. Uh, so yes. we, you know, cackle on that as well. Uh, but basically I, I think... Out of left field. Suchita, you're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> why would you come up with why, 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 I would, I've got a dirty mind but I would not have come up with that he's chewing on something using the bonomed 
Unless the camera doesn't do justice to this young See, man. There you go. Is this so natural vitamin D3 is is supposedly a bona med, is what she's Ooh. claiming it to be. He has like 40 others in his pocket also. Yeah, uh, I have about four other different. I yeah. try a lot of these things. I and you do it for the same philosophy of getting the boner? No. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm just made That's up just a, a side effect. I come from a family of doctors, so I always got free samples of things. So now I'm just like end up buying a lot of these random things and trying them out. So what's so, your yes. dinner table conversation? Bita, well yeah. done. You got an erection today. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he'll ever catch me for this, but I do know that when my dad got free samples of, of Viagra, he gave it to a bunch of his friends. Um, and that's years how back. Varun was born. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> boner in your head, man. That was a burn if ever. Ouch. Doogie Rala. You're yes. down 0-2 here, bro. Down 0-2. You know how you were born. We've learned a lot. Obviously, great chemistry between you two, but uh, how did the question everyone will want to know, of course, is how did you meet? Because uh, is it a We've actually together? never met in person. We've never met. What? Never. No wonder you met each other. <laughs> <Make sense? laughs> so we got in touch, we connected about 2020, uh, early lockdown phase. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I was doing some. Was I doing some stuff with LBB or was this correct? Yeah. Before that, Varun was basically working with us on a project for LBB, um, and we ended up exchanging notes on some like session he was hosting for us. Uh, and then uh, next thing you know, um, you know, I'm on Varun's podcast. Varun, it's it's all podcasting, man. Like yeah. very incestuous world. Yeah. So I oh. I got onto Varun's podcast. He came onto Open House, uh, and we just got along. Like it was just one of those things where you know what I mean. Like you're chatting with someone, and and like that half an hour conversation goes on for longer. Uh, and and we became internet friends. That's that's how this happened. Which is the way friendship is today. Let's face it. Nobody's ever going to meet in flesh ever again. You know, this is that's with us for the next 20, 25 years. Every day they mutate to some other virus and no vaccine can handle it, blah, blah, blah. But uh, so interesting. Two years is all going well because you haven't actually met in the flesh. Uh, would you like to meet or do you think it'll spoil a good thing? So we were actually planning to do like I was supposed to go fly to Delhi before this wave hit. Um, and the plan was let's maybe do one recording um, in person, but still don't know. I, but I, I guess we're going to either she's going to pop by to Bombay or I'm going to pop by to Delhi and we're going to do one recording in person for sure. Yeah, um, we'll make it happen. Oh, you have to meet halfway in Indore or something with uh, where Munawar Jaipur, Jaipur. has that's in, Jaipur, in Indore. Yes. Jaipur is closer to Delhi. You're losing again, Varun. Let me help you here. Yeah. I, I, uh, I think I like Jaipur more than Indore. I think maybe that's Indore is a lovely place. Don't get few, uh, confused by the name. Okay. There is an outdoor to it as well. It's not just that. There's lots to do. Um, <laughs> let, let's talk about your book. Everything is out of syllabus. All your names are... What, what do you think of his names, titles, apps, etc.? They always these self-deprecating or slightly, you know, challenging sort of uh, titles. They're clickbaity. Uh, they are clickbaity to some extent. Yeah, no, but they, they work well. Uh, I, I think for Varun across his newsletter, even his podcast, right? Like advertising is dead. Um, so I, I, I think Varun has like a knack with with uh, getting the terminology right and getting... And evidently people really like the name because he's... Uh, sold out or whatever number one on pre-orders on Amazon, uh, as you you know told us yeah. earlier. Yes. I can't make that up. It's written there. Yeah. But but also uh, going back to advertising, advertising is dead. I was just thinking I was in advertising. You hear that, you have to check it out. You feel insecure. Is he, is this some sort of thing I didn't pick up? Or and B, you just want to know what the guy has to say. It's a fabulous title, I must say. Hats off. I don't know about the boner. But the, the top of the body is working really well. Um, okay, uh, everything is out of syllabus. It's a it's like a life instructions. What is it? No, so basically, uh, uh, I wanted to write a book about all the stuff which um, I felt I, I should really have known when I was twenty one. Uh, I'm almost forty now, and I was like, um, you know, there's, there's there's stuff which they you know they always tell you like school and college prepare you for life, uh, but they don't prepare you for most things that life throws at you. So I was like, what are those things which I would have wanted to know? So I, I put them down, and I said, um, it's it's almost like. You can read it or get what your own instruction manual for your life could be. So uh, not like massive stories from my life, like really random instances, um, like first day of internship in MTV and stuff like that. Um, and um, well, what was that like? Um, I was um, I, I was called a village bicycle. Uh, so I basically said Varun's the new easy. village bicycle. Anybody can ride him was the introduction right, I got, right. got, it, got, it, got, uh, got way the back in yeah. the day. Uh, uh. Uh, and um, uh, so that, but also like I, I read a lot. So I took a lot of stuff from other books, which people can use as as mental models, frameworks. Plagiarism, basically. Fair enough. Plagiarism. All, 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 all referenced and, and nicely yeah. given acknowledgements. But I want to go back to MTV. I remember you more like a writer. Were you more like a writer? Uh, um, helping on the show? I helped. I, no, I, I was uh, initially intern uh, for four months. Um, you and I hung out and... Yeah. yeah, you and I hung out watching uh, Fashion Week uh, during that time. I'm just like, oh my, God. my early I'm so remembrance. sorry, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope that's out of your system now. Those were horrible times. Fashion um, Week, Sujita, you please don't even refer to these things. The slowest yeah. 
It's, it's like someone who likes golf. I still don't know how you like yeah. golf. Chess is faster than golf, if you ask me. Yeah. I mean, chess is a little riveting. Golf is the slowest game. And then they disappear for hours to find the ball also. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. Uh, worst, you're in like, coma. Painful. You're in a sporting coma. Unbelievable. Let's go to Sujita. We won't want to leave her out. Tell us about this Wiscraft thing. Uh, they were the pioneering event company. But you're coming Did you get tissue fascinated. papers at that price? Did, did, did you meet Suresh Kalmadi? What was he like? Uh, I did meet uh, Suresh Kalmadi uh, once accidentally. Um, uh, no, but actually my experience with Wiscraft was awesome because we guys worked on the opening and closing ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. So we had nothing to do with like all the shit that went down outside of... Which is the most spectacular part of the games anyway, isn't it? Yeah, no, and, and, and it was an incredible experience because I was fresh out of college. Um, all of 20 managing like 14 costumes for 14,000 people, wow. uh, which was not a joke. Um, uh, but it was just it was just insane. And I think like the thing that I really liked about Wiscraft is they kind of throw you, you know, into the ocean and then you have to sink or swim. And not pay you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was paid decently <laughs> well um, uh, by by like general sort of standards. It, it was it was insane. I, I think the thing that I l at least learned from my Commonwealth experience is, uh, you know, I vividly remember this one time where we guys were working 16, 18 hours a day. Um, and like torn and like tired to the bone, right? And uh, and I'm exhausted uh, and I break down, I'm crying because I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. It's been six months of this, like, you know, this, that and the other. And I call my boss up um, and she's just like, are you crying? And I was like, yeah, I'm just exhausted. This is nonstop. And, you know, she said this one thing which is stuck with me for my whole entire life. She just like suck it up because this is life, bro. Who's the boss? Uh, actually, it's a lovely lady. So um, she's She was just, uh, no, she's this lady called uh, Bhairavi. She was managing some part of, you know, a, a segment. And and it was just amazing because I think a lot well, of... Empathy was to tell you to suck it up like you're playing a game of rugby or something. Go but back it's needed, no? Like we guys are talking about kids these days and how, you know, teacher says one thing, sub, you know, everyone sort of has is like a epiphany yeah. over how could she slap and this that and the other Correct. but but I, I think a lot of you know at least my growing up years were just you know toughen up and uh, you know deal so with you're pro slapping just get that out of the system <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're pro the whack <laughs> and listen, as, as someone who had two kids uh, now they're a little older but you know I've got to tell you I don't understand why the whack is not necessary once in a while like I can't understand no, this no, whole I, thing I about it's negotiating it's like with terrorists you know after some time you negotiate what are you going to do please calm down please behave better please don't make I mean it doesn't make any sense Sometimes the kid is behaving like a complete prick. Someone has to say, you know, call them out. So that's amazing. So they threw you in. You've got this huge, I mean, I can't think of the magnitude of a Commonwealth game opening and uh, closing. And you're suddenly in charge of all kinds of things. And yeah. that obviously gave you confidence going forward from there. But how do you I, I think more. Big, I, yeah, I, I think more than confidence, it's more, you know, uh, problem solving, right? Because um, uh, I, I think while working on the Commonwealth Games, we literally saw the ceilings fall, right? Um, uh, we, you know, we, 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 we saw everything that you read in newspapers was happening like IRL in front of us. Um, and I think when you see all of these situations arise, it's, it's the same thing, right? It just gives you this like chipper attitude of we'll get through it. Um, and for everything that the whole team at Wiscraft, you know, went through to put the Commonwealth Games together, that they pulled off the most spectacular show uh, was just... And it was flawless in the end, no? I remember we, we criticized it so much. We are on our stupid show and everything. But in the end, it actually, if you look back at it, it was flawless. There was nothing went wrong. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And it was genuinely a coming together of so many cultures because, uh, you know, we guys uh, got artists and dancers from literally all across India to be a part of the Games. So uh, for me, just incredible experience, uh, you know, very like humbling, grounding and all of that, but really taught you life skills of, you know, life goes on and, uh, you know, was, shit happens and you need to just suck it up. Yeah, I, I think that's fair enough. You know, when you think about, uh, I think you guys are lucky, actually, generation that just gets thrown in. That won't happen now. It's a more formal sort of world yeah. now. You'll probably go through step by step process. Varun came to MTV, no no idea exactly what he's going to do. And suddenly he's a super successful guy. You were thrown into Commonwealth Games and now, you know, you're running one of the under 30s and under 40s of, of Asia and the world. So, you know, anything can happen. I mean, that that's the best part of these stories. I want to keep uh, saying that so people listening understand that things can happen. Everyone is not like me. People do do well in life. Um... But going back to Suresh Kalmadi, how was he? Because he got so much criticism, but in the end, he didn't get enough, uh, what's the right word, kudos, plaudits. Um, they got the brickbats, but not the bouquets. Yeah, I, I think that whole, you know, world of just all things sports is tough and complicated. And also, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, I think with a lot of these things, and we, we see, we've seen it happen over and over again, right? Even with the more recent Olympics, where it really takes a village to make things happen. Uh, and uh, I think the problem right now is you know when things Sorry. are going well everyone kind of wants to put their you know hat in the ring right um and take 
whatever little credit that they can uh, you know uh, get out of uh, get out of an outcome that that's that's gone fairly well I, i think with him one way or the other he would have been the fall guy um, or he would have been the guy that would have gotten you know maximum credit for what was done uh, but uh, i i don't know i i think there's something this could be like a 30 minute live segment unto itself but i think specifically sports in india uh, there's um, it's a massive opportunity that uh, you know has unfortunately just gone to waste because there's too many people fighting to you know be in the limelight um, I I mean we can talk about bcci as well if you'd like but the show might get cancelled and you might get uh, disbarred from youtube <laughs> so you let me know virat was pushed into a corner sushida you think varun uh, uh, varun do you think virat was pushed into a i corner? definitely think he was pushed into a corner i have like i have no doubt about it I, one of the best tweets I saw about it is uh, is that um, he got chappled, uh, which is an interesting reference to what to yeah. Ganguly now being the BCCI president and exactly yes. the same thing happens. Yeah. Yes. Fair enough. So, but that you know, I don't think that would be out of place in other cultures as well. I think people think it's only an Indian thing, but there's vindictiveness and uh, whatever. My yeah. horse versus your horse everywhere in the world, so that's not a big yeah. deal. But at the end of the day, he had a seven-year run as captain. How long do you want to be captain anyway? I, th- I think that's yeah. fair. The only sad thing is that now he's leaving, and we're th- thinking he's been pushed out when he could have left with a little bit. If he had won and left, it would have been different. Mm, they won the true. last series. That's Why are we true. digressing to Virat for some reason? Yeah. Just touch me off on sports. Um, yes. Now let's talk about uh, LBB and uh, the glitch. Launched in two thousand nine was the glitch, and when did it launch LBB? So it started as a side hustle while I was with the BBC uh, in twenty eleven, twenty twelve. But uh, twenty sixteen is that do well? That's so. I mean, that's so mean. People are thinking their main job goes nowhere, and she just by like, took a chance on this thing and boom, out of the park. Yeah, yeah. But twenty fifteen onwards is really where you know things sort of fell into place, and uh, and and we got the ball uh, rolling. But Varun, the glitch you've uh, uh, been at it and also sold your brand. Wow. Yeah, so it's, Varun, that, that's a, it's a ridiculously unbelievable story. I'm sure if you yeah. look back in your life, you wouldn't have imagined this would have happened to you at such a quick pace at that point. So the thing is, we quit Channel V, and because I jumped from MTV to Channel V at that point of time, was in Channel V for a correct few years. Choice, and, correct choice. Um, Be- there were better looking people at Channel V. I accept it totally. Go on. That, that's actually uh, mildly correct. true. Mildly no, true. yes. <laughs> I mean, it's relative between a crocodile and alligator. It's not that much difference, but yeah, that is on. true. Uh, so yeah, so so we quit right after the recession had happened, right? So everybody was like, "Why are you quitting and starting a company?" But me and Rohit just said, "Okay, let's let's try this one out." We we honestly just had to pay for ourselves. So um, 2009 start from our apartment um, and kind of grew that. Just how we saw it, we we, we didn't understand words like startup, entrepreneur, and all that stuff. We just wanted to like he used to direct, I used to produce. We just create stuff and eventually became an agency and grew that. So it's been interesting. But actually, the last four years has been more interesting because you know, we sold the company in 2018 um, and uh, spent the last four years being in. In, oh my god the moment he said he sold the company huh? your wifi just hung the moment you said you sold the company it's always really? like they're watching uh, I, yeah i don't know <laughs> there is something happening with me saying yeah. sold the company yeah. why is it on that line and that line huh? alone ah huh, sorry so you know. sold the company in 2018 know. And yeah, um, and uh, we've been a part of WPP since then. So uh, for the last four years, um, you know, we've been part of the of, of a larger system, a more global system. So suddenly moving to like a corporate setup has been interesting for me because I've never really done that. I mean, I can ne- I cannot call MTV or Channel V corporate in any sense. At least when I was there, I think eventually they became that, and Channel V became Star Sports Canada. Anyway. Hey, bro, we had marketing, sales, human resource, admin. We had everything. We also Do you remember had... how those guys looked. Yeah, they they look worse than the VJs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freaky Friday was people in uh, tight pants. Walking around was ridiculous. Vikram yeah, Raisa, so do you remember him? Yes, of course. Around? Oh yeah. my God! So we had this guy, Sushita Vikram Raisa, lovely guy, great fun, but he dressed in really tight clothes, and he was like, you know, an MBA from somewhere and all that. And thought MTV, he'd have Elvis sideburns, these really funny glasses like John Lennon, and these really tight shirts and pants, and he's walking around with his uh, lats flared. And I think Varun was very. Uh, I met him many years later when he was, I think, the head statue. of a jewelry brand, um, and yeah. I'd gone to pitch for their business. I remember that's the last time I met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. came from jewelry, went back to jewelry. I don't know after that what happened. And what happened to the MTV pitch? MTV was not a jewel. No, not at all. But what happened to the pitch with him? Didn't work out. Ah, uh, didn't work out. We didn't end up getting that business. But uh, it, it's been interesting. I think for me, at least, last four years, been trying to understand um, how to work within slightly larger systems. So, uh, but more than anything, I'm very happy because we we actually built a great team, right? So uh, our whole point was not to be these. Okay, these are people who start the company. They'll have everything. um you know it centered around them so now we have like good 25 30 people in leadership who actually run a large part of the business gives me time to do podcasts and other things like that but uh, yeah it's been it's been it's been interesting uh, we went from two people in an apartment to about 450 people now 
um across typical, Rusi, typical mumbai apartment i can tell you that yeah. uh, the way you <laughs> blossomed uh, but uh, let, let's I, i'll ask you a slightly awkward question as you go into break for both of you all which is what are the what is the one really shiny quality you like about varun uh, and varun you about sushita and then what's the one thing you want to change about them come on this is a slightly miss india style question but it's, it's because you know um, I, at the end of the day it's a person connect she is very well researched yet yet spontaneous um that's what i would say um is that that's a good stuff yeah she she comes in with like there's this information there but she's like super spontaneous in what she you says you have the research and you're fabulous with the yeah, yeah. i mean that's like that's that's going to be difficult for you to up sujita oh, so i can't think of a better compliment to someone who's in a broadcasting <laughs> position because he's saying you do your your stuff and you also are great at the the stuff itself so you you, you that's the whole book and what, what what would you like to not criticize but if you have to change something what if i had to the, change something Um, the, the penis jokes, for example, <laughs> gets to you after some time as you age. Damn it, um, you're getting closer to the truth. <laughs> can she stop being so well researched? It put it makes me <laughs> it makes me do more work. That's a fair compliment because you know that's actually you know yeah it just raises the standard for no reason. Sometimes yeah. the viewers don't deserve it. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Okay, so she's at your turn. Oh, oh man, tables have turned. Yeah, I think that I think the very nice. Uh, yeah, shit, Varun. Damn it! I, I'm gonna have to. He's go a ladies' man, notes. Sujita. Learn from this guy. Shakal pe likha hai. Shakal pe likha hai. The hence the biotin uh, gummies. Who uh, uh, does biotin? I'm, I'm, what of the course. hell? I, the bona biotin for the hair. What, this what, is uh, this is uh, 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 the the effects of a, of a really well done hair transplant. Um, is it really? Yeah, actually, like I, I, I got it like wow, two, uh, one and a half, two years ago. Yeah, it, these things work. It's pretty good, brother. Yeah, yeah. Shit. It looks yeah. real. Wow! Good no, it is you. my hair. They just take it from the back and they put it on top. That's what they do. Uh, so it's not like it's somebody oh, else's man. hair. It just goes. Because you never like lose the pubic hair remains all your life. So they can do that. So, if, so actually, so I actually asked this question. I actually asked yeah. the doctor this question. Like, so basically, they 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 look at all the hair at like on the sides because supposedly guys never lose this hair, uh, which the is back, around the sides of, the of your head. Yeah, yeah. 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 back of the neck. And so they they look at like there are four strands. They like they take out like alternate ones and that's what they insert um, on top. And I said, okay, what if you run out of those? and he just smiled and said you know we'll have to go to places which you ideally don't want to go but uh, it seems like that's an option no but the the texture of that hair which so is sorry to uh, bring this up but you discuss bonus it's your fault uh, is that the texture is very different from from the hair at the back the actual head hair scalp maybe someone's got it but but i find these places no, super interesting you can match it with somebody else's pubes you got to check then you have to go i don't think somebody else's hair will work have, on you uh, can so. i just uh, mm, is that so you can't transplant one i don't hair? know i i, I should actually ask them Um, I, I, I'm now I'm like intrigued to see what all they can do. Like I've seen stuff like you know you can make a smile Baru, better. You have any Sindhi friends? There's a beard transplant. Sindhi or Kachi friends. My wife is Kachi. They are very hairy uh, people. Go hmm. to them because they have excess hair. They'll be able to help you. I, I'll, I'll send you, know, you some. You can get a beard transplant. There's something called a beard transplant. People don't I have beards. Are doing transplants. I can't go. I can't go. In fact, my wife's beard is bigger than mine now as we age. So it's like embarrassing. <laughs> I just can't. But I trace some Genghis Khan's bloodline so I can ride a horse. I mean, without training, I, if you put me on a horse, I can just go. You can get a transplant. I've heard some Bollywood actors have gotten beard transplants. I will not. You name think? Them. Yes. Oh, please, name please name them. Please name them. Please. One name, uh, Varun. Come on, you can do on. it. Um, is it Varun? Is it Varun? Is that the name? <laughs> no, no. I'm not a Bollywood actor. Let's just oh, say a, that another um, Varun. Uh, Could be a John. Hmm. He always had a beard. No. Um, Let's say he's who's... very acrobatic. He's very acrobatic. Akshay. No, no. Younger, younger. Oh, Tiger Shroff. That's what I've heard. It's a rumor. Oh. Wow! I go to talk to Tiger Shroff. It didn't start yeah. with me. I read it online. There's there's a case coming your way, Varun. <laughs> no, but it's not a, it's not a negative. If you, oh, if you yeah, can't no, grow, no, no, no. I got a head beard. I can't grow. Who am I to comment? Yeah, yeah, and I could never grow like a proper beard like some of my friends who in two weeks they're like you know ready to yeah. lead a revolution. But you know that's the way it is. So you know you're getting off. You're not telling us the truth here. Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so so one awesome thing about Varun is uh, you know he has this like uncanny ability to really go with the flow. Uh, for the, and that's something that I struggle with, right? Like I am like you know hyper like organized, and he has this like awesome way of. I think he doesn't get derailed if things go. You're in there. Not at all, uh, and like twenty yeah. things can happen. You know, uh, I can like lose track of what's going on. But he has this amazing ability. I get like that. Just... He's got that equanimity, that coolness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's chill and he's calm, and uh, you know, I, I think it's it's a really really awesome balance to yeah, how our conversation plays out. One thing that I change is. Hmm. This is a tough one because I feel like I was going to say maybe your dad jokes. I want to just warn you: his his uh, critique was actually a compliment. If you really look at it, it wasn't really a critique. So think oh, about so, it anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but uh, but, but his uh, his his, his your, your, Varun, your dad jokes. We need to like make them either daddier 
Yes. Or like, yeah, yeah. E- either we make I, them. I like play on a borderline there. Super Papa Ji. Although, or... the, although the best joke that has been made on this show um, was when the crypto ban happened. Suchita called that premature ejaculation. Uh, when the crypto ban was supposed to happen, or rather, she's all about the male uh, freaking appendage <laughs> uh, double meaning, bro. I'm getting, uh, I'm sweating here. Oh. <laughs> premature ejaculation then. And I was laughing. I was like laughing through that episode. I was like, I could not stop laughing at that. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, going to I mean, not to continue complimenting Varun because uh, he has no dearth of uh, self esteem or self confidence. Exactly. Uh, uh, but uh, no, but but I I think the thing that's uh, awesome about him is you know like um, I can say whatever I want without you know uh, feeling like I need to walk on eggshells and it's vice versa as well. And I think that's what makes the episodes as fun as they are because we can genuinely say dude what are you saying man that makes no sense or you know i can throw in a premature ejaculation or a bonum ad joke and and we just run with things uh, and i think that is is it's very like bruh you know you know what i mean you like it's very like so you know what's happening here i hope what? you can see it you guys are what? ready for marriage you have a better <laughs> relationship than most of my friends have with their wives i mean the spouses that is I mean, you guys. I mean, like you said, you can say anything. There's no awkwardness. You know each other threadbare. But this is very like the it's, flesh. it's very bhai bhen. Like it's very yes. like it's very like. It's a question bhai. of sexual chemistry. Half the time you're discussing premature ejaculation. So obviously, <laughs> I I don't want to push the agenda here. But obviously, it's very like come on. bro, bro. Like it's very like you know we guys could have gone to the same boarding school. Of course, it is. It's very bro. It's very very bro bro. Yeah. Bro, yeah, bro. Yeah. We're all like bro. <laughs> Is that what you think of Dali girls, bitta? Huh? Bro, bro. Oh, you better stay in Jaipur and don't cross the border from there. <laughs> Dali that girls. That is a comical no. match in Sushita. Prithvi, Prithvi has sent a message saying comical match in Sushita and better looking. And plus, can you grow a beard? That's three and three if you can. Imagine. I can. I, I had PCOD, so I can literally grow a beard ah. if I want. To. Wow! Time to switch the jokes to Magical female <laughs> masculinity humor, since ours is uh, getting butchered left, right, and center. Uh, we'll take a quick break and bring in the legend, Silvery Antariksh, born somewhere outside Kashmir, lived in Panchgani, then in Beach Candy, and then finally in Pawai, where nobody sees him. Uh, Silvery, please enter the show. They both know who you are, so there's no point in introducing you. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, these guys are going to love it because they're all about breaks. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. Here it is. Hey, everybody. It's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, Varun speaks to Rohit Raj, business partner at BBK Vines. Rohit talks about what it takes to be a creator's backbone and shares some exclusive tidbits from the marketing of Dindora. On Smarter with Sid, Siddharth tells us what to do next once we have our dream job. On Tere Minute Raste, Kesha points out the contrast in commuting by Indian and American railways. On Hans Vani, here's the story Uljan that asks a question about love and friendship. And on Marathi Kitke Tunda Deshmukh's dissect Padmatai Gole's famous poem, Chafya Cha Zada. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. We really do appreciate the word of mouth. Also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms that you're listening to us on, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is. And we are also on YouTube. On YouTube, you can check out our various channels on ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Bank of Baroda and Coinswitch Kuber. Thank you for making this possible. Yes, we take our coin switch uh, Kuber properties and we put them in the Bank of Baroda. So we bring those two parties together as well. But I want to ask uh, both Sush- Varun is gone. Sushita, what's happened? Uh, Varun, Varun walked out. The internet needs to resurrect You think it's that itself. or he was offended by the last no. joke? Uh, I think I, it was an actual. I think he thought it was an actual break and he just went off. Oh, or it's a premature <laughs> eject- time, ejection <laughs> of uh, him somehow. Yeah, but let's ask Sujita while you wait for him to come back. So, what's your take on Elon Musk being uh, wooed by Jayant Patel of the, uh, you know, mis- financier and Telangana and West Bengal? Three, four states have been throwing their hat in the ring and begging him to come and invest. And uh, what's your call on that in Willie? But, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think he should. Uh, and, and you know, Varun and I had briefly spoken about this in an episode as well. But, uh, you know, some where there has to be decentralization of where and how manufacturing uh-huh. happens, right? Uh-huh. Uh, no, but it's, it's it's honestly needed. I mean, think about how much is outsourced to China, and 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 given that you know, general generally right now there is a bit of a negative sentiment vis-a-vis investing in China, given the crazy crackdowns that are happening. Uh, I honestly think, as a country, this is our opportunity to win um, any amount of outsourcing of manufacturing. So, if they can actually woo him, get him to take. Um, 
India more seriously. Uh, it's 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 definitely a win for us. I don't know what the end product would look like, but uh, it, it, it's definitely a win for us. Not to use the word racism, but it's almost like Desis out there can get a job in like they just have to ring the bell and they've got a yeah. job, you know, with with any of these big three. But uh, coming here and putting their money where their mouth is, in a sense, and using us as pillars for them, that's still going to take some time. Why do you think he's skeptical? But I mean, he's not saying anything negative, but he's still not put his money where his mouth is. I think, um, I mean, it's a bunch of things. Uh, you know, one, our capabilities with respect to manufacturing of, 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 uh, you know, more specifically EVs, etc. It's, it's yet to play out. Uh, I mean, not that I've analyzed EVs enough as a space, but, uh, but I, I wonder where the, you know, I, I wonder where the parts are manufactured. I don't know how much of it is happening in India versus being sourced from, you know, places all, all around the world. So I think the skepticism you know, uh, could be the same reason why a lot of uh, car companies have pulled out of India as well. Um, so, uh, you know, so, so I, I think it's one of those where with India, it could go either way, uh, right? It's, it's, it'll either be an opportunity. So like, yeah. At the end of the day, in the sense of how our manufacturing comes together, the jugaad that's involved sometimes, uh, X, Y, Z, and et cetera, et cetera. And also, let's be honest, India is not an easy place to do business, right? I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not even an easy place to do business if you're Indian, let alone if you're, you know, not from here uh, and are trying to make all of these pieces sort of come together and, and play out for you. So I think, I think largely that's really what it is. Yeah, but let's just end with a positive point here. So you do think that sooner or later, they'll streamline a little bit in terms of our business uh, behavior from the ground up and he will he and others will put their money on the table and invest i think we have to because this is ours to lose uh, you know you've literally got the whole world saying that the supply chain disruption that happened in the past you know uh, 12 to 24 months uh, can cause havoc, right? Um, the only reason Apple has survived is because of the operational excellence of Tim Cook. So I think this is, as a country, this is ours to lose. If we can't get our shit together and really pull businesses right now when there is this, you know, generally negative sentiment towards China, this is, it, it's ours to lose. And if you also sort of juxtapose it to startups, the amount of money that's coming into startups uh, is a consequence of two things. One, the Fed and them generally being very loose with their wallets in the US. And the second is money that would have typically gone into investment in China is now coming our way. Uh, so you've got all of this action, right? It needs to amount in something tangible. Uh, and and uh, I mean, I'm an optimist as you have to be if you're an entrepreneur. So here's hoping things will actually change and improve. And so for us to be a source and replace China, the act will have to be now because if the world heals and all that is possible, yeah. then they'll go back there, right? Yep. So it's all about timing yep, yep. as well. Varun, we are just discussing, uh, and Sushita being a well-educated person with proper degrees, yeah. unlike you, so she's giving us, uh, <laughs> I mean, please feel free. If you want a, if you want a pe penile metaphor, she'll give us one. Sushita, in a nutshell, <laughs> using uh, the groin analogies you've been comfortable with for some reason <laughs> to three complete strangers. Uh, no, no, perhaps not. Silvery, Polo Dikra, <laughs> yes. Su Bolvanu. Yes. Huh? I have a question for uh, Varun and Sushita. So just we just yesterday on on the show we were talking about uh, a study that has uh, come out from the ASCI, which is the Advertising Standards Council of India, uh, talking about the things Indians take offense to. So over hmm. the last three years Everything. they had uh, exactly four eighty eight so, uh, points. Yeah. So. so no no so they had four eighty eight ads. Kile they got some one thousand seven hundred something uh, emails. So they studied those and kind of like tried to categorize into six different categories as to what are the categories where Indians are taking offense. So I don't know if you read this, but uh, some of the categories were, of course, religious sentiments uh, or hurting, deemed to be hurting religious sentiments mm. or uh, uh, so ads that reinforce like something unpleasant. Uh, so say like talking. What about the male one? What about the, what yeah, about the then, male, then, right? The, the the male identity being. Uh, yeah, yeah, ads that are construed to be against uh, masculinity or men. Are kind of some of the things and going against Indian traditions. What is uh, why we talking about the man in a comic way or whatever? It's like you've uh, emasculated the man, and so all these men wrote in saying, "No, my wife will never talk to me like that," etc. Which is basically a case of sexism, and yeah. they were yeah. entertained. Yeah, sorry. Go yeah, on. so just wanted your take on this. Like, how does it affect advertising then going forward? It's dead, but according to you, um, <laughs> it's it, it, that that is true. A, uh, it's it's not the same game anymore. Advertising is very different now from what it was even like two years ago, right? So last two years fully changed everything over there. But um, uh, in India, it's always been the case, right? People take offense as something kind of scales up a little bit. It's nothing new. Um, I mean, television networks had this 
amazing department called uh, the standards and practices whose job was to run through every single show every single promo and say okay cut it's off any deep. reference to a religion cut off reference to this thing so um digital kind of stayed away from that for a while but it's, it's now it's everywhere and mm. i mean there are pluses and minuses the plus is that if something is really offensive you can kind of file something against but i think we like people I have a lot of time to really be able to file as many uh, defamation cases and this and that and all that stuff uh, on everything. Um, so I, 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 I honestly, would love to see uh, the profile of, of some of these people. You know, I still don't understand why you go out of your way, sitting in your armchair. To you know, I mean, it's not like you know, a girl child had a terrible. There used to be a college professor. I remember this. I remember yeah. when I was in Channel V, there was a college professor who would watch Channel V and MTV to find any reference of anything off and sue them. College oh, professor, wow. I think, was. Was it National College in Bandra or one of those? Uh, if I remember right, and this guy would just do that, and we would, and we all knew who this person was because this person would put those things, and somebody would like because we all have lunch together, and the standard the legal guy would sit with us and say, "Yeah, he's he's filed one more thing now," and because I made a <laughs> reference to a, a dog or oh, no, I made a reference. There was a reference to a cow, not in any wrong sense, but it was just there was a reference to a cow. What is a wrong sense in any case? Did this person ever win any other cases? No, they just keep filing it. So it's it's a way to kind of they made him a VJ. You want to get some money out of it? You probably you probably know yeah, Gaurav Kapoor. Right. Yeah, they made him a VJ and now he's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh nice. yeah, simple answer. <laughs> uh, so that's how you get a job at MTV. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah so you, yeah. you sue yeah. them. <laughs> It's it's just amazing how many people have time in in India with all this shit happening, and that, they, that yeah. this becomes an issue. And I understand if it's a serious issue like a farmer agitation or something. This is not yeah. that. This is yeah. nothing. This is literally a guy saying that you know my malehood is being questioned. Which if he meets Sushita, he probably lose it completely. <laughs> uh, my favorite story from MTV was this that I remember there was a promo which had a a poster of Shea Guevara being burnt, and there was a protest outside MTV. People were throwing stones, but because the cops had put barricades. The stones hit Leo Burnett, who's a, the agency office is next door. The poor Burnett office got hit oh, with stones. No. MTV, we went and had a drink. Um, so th- I mean, this has always been the case. We and, take offense and, so uh, easily. To take it further, Leo Burnett was on the left of MTV, literally. <laughs> so yeah, just just to push that. Sorry, couldn't resist. Uh, all right, so, so we should go to AM. Yes, please. Should we go to the AMS? Yeah, please do. Sorry, yeah, what yeah. you were you just saying something? No, I was saying that I was asking her what she thinks of the the ad piece. Yes. No, no. I mean, it's, it's exactly what you guys said, right? That in this country, there is no lack of money. So I think, uh, in, in in true Delhi style, uh, too many velas in this lovely desh. That's true. Really, I, I I have a little parallel with the with the building uncles, which we expose ourselves to during pandemic. Every colony and building has these uncles yeah. who have no work, and they are very busybody like and keep sending all these forwards and all that. It's the same yeah. mindset. I think it's a lot to do with not having normal pressure in your life to pay bills and uh, yeah. a career, and maybe yeah. looking after your parents or kids or whatever. So you just need yeah. something to validate your yeah. existence. And if you the profile of this uh, professor, he must be bored in his job. You know that yeah. he sits there in national college thinking, watching MTV and Channel V to find what uh, Malika's dress is too short. By one inch or something, yeah. which you know, yeah, something like that. Yeah. which All it was. Time. I told her. I told her I was not happy. <laughs> not in our parampara and sanskriti. The words are there as you enter MTV. Parampara and sanskriti. <laughs> Two big words. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Let's go to the AMS. AMS. Yes. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. All right. The first one comes in from Girish Patel. You guys already talked about Shark Tank a bit. Uh, so, what is your opinion about Shark Tank India? I wanted to watch it. Uh, I started watching it, and uh, I liked it a lot. Is what Girish Patel said. We love Shark Tank India. I guys. love I it. I really so, like. I really like it. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. So much fun. And credit to Varun, yeah, uh, because yeah. I was like resisting watching it, but then he's just like, watch it. It's super fun, and all, all the sharks are great. And I got into really? it. Just excellent. Uh, yeah, super. Really well made show. Also, do you have a favorite? Shark? And it's got the right amount of desi masala in it, right? So the thing is that if you if you had to do it exactly like how the American Shark Tank was, it'll end up being boring. It's fun. Oh uh, yeah, Sujata, do you have a favorite shark up till now? Not only can we hear you, but it's it's like a really amateur show now <laughs> because you're talking about what's going wrong, and we're all listening to each other perfectly fine. So yeah, thanks a lot for lowering our already low oh, show. My, it's not my possible, bad. but you've done it. Okay, yeah. sorry. Do we have a favorite no, shark? Think- yeah, we do, man. All the Delhi sharks are great. I think Piyush Bansal and Aman uh, Gupta from uh, Port yeah. Piyush Bansal from Lenskar, they're hilarious. Uh, yeah. And I think it's like that. I, 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 I think it's the Delhi boys who make it fun, man. I mean, not yeah. to play the city card, but uh, this is me playing the city Weirdly card. Weirdly enough, somebody pointed out there are no, there is nobody from Bangalore on uh, on the uh, maybe a language the issue, no? Because you, they can't speak uh, fluent enough Hindi or whatever. Maybe that's one of the issues. Also, there are little. Otherwise, it makes no sense. There are little boring. 
let's be honest iris let's be honest they're a little boring i don't know that's fair i don't think that's fair but yeah i, I get your point about the delhi guys being more cocky is like virat as captain was scale rahul you'll see the difference in mm. body yeah. language not saying that one system is better than the others but uh, the americans for example each one has a separate personality which is True. after some time well defined uh, you know i i like that what's the ball guy's name kevin, kevin. Yeah, yeah, kevin. kevin yeah correct yeah mr, kevin, mr. So wonderful Mr. Wonderful, I just find him fantastic, and I've seen him cry enough on the show to know that he's also uh, he got a lot of heart. It's not like he's just this bully, uh, which uh, I'm sure on the Indian thing we'll slowly get to know more yeah. about the. Amman's great. Amman's actually my favorite yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. They, they'll they'll show you different sides of their personality, but it's but it's fa- fantastic. I, I think it's what y'all are doing also to some extent because people get inspired by a success. Be like uh, people come across as everyday people after some time they relate to them and all of because of the conversation what they're seeing, and I think it's great for entrepreneurs across the country and the world. These yeah. shows. What do you think, Silvery? Yeah, absolutely. Are you, are you thinking of leaving the job and starting a business? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, immediately. <laughs> I was thinking of the next season. <laughs> if we can collect pubic hair across the world and then put it together, uh, pubichair.com, yeah. make wigs. Use that to yeah. make wigs and things like that. Beards, for example, beards are yeah. big right. in. In fashion, yeah. Varun is Varun. By the way, you didn't have a beard when you were in MTV, did you? No, I didn't. It, it grew over time. I, I had one of those, like you know, those we we all had those weird goatees just on the on the chin. I had one of those and is and that, a shaved is head. Is that reverse modesty? The more success yeah. you have, the the more gruff and scruffy and bad you want to look. I like yes, that. Yes. That's fabulous. So people still <laughs> so want to help you. Think... Ajinkya Rahane, Ajinkya Rahane looks good with beard and glasses <laughs> because Varun looks like Ajinkya Rahane. <laughs> I look like Ajinkya Rahane. That's what do you? Are you calling me a failed batsman now? <laughs> he's not failed. He's not failed. That's not fair. You see the Melbourne hundred uh, one yes. year back. Been, no, I've so, failed. Failed in recent times. Right? Okay, I will take my words back. Failed. But then in all three of times. them. All three of them are averaging between twenty and twenty-four in the last two years. That's if you look, I won't take names. I just Father, find Rahane to be so bichara. I, I've never. He's never really appealed to me as a cricketer. Of course, well, this pandemic has been unkind. We lost some Test cricket. We lost some momentum. It's a little unfair. And he's got such a good record of abroad up to this season, of course. Unfortunately, but why do we digress now? Then I want to talk cricket for the rest of the show. It's all your fault, Sushita, because you and your jokes about you know what and you know what. And thank God my wife can't hear everything because she'll yeah. start telling you my my issues. <laughs> yes, young man. So, so guys, one more thing about Shark Tank, uh, Shark Tank oh India. God. Uh, any favorite products up till now, or or businesses up till now that uh, sort of looked really interesting to you? Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's like everywhere. Every everyone's talking about it. Everyone's talking about watching this show. So it's just. I'm thinking which one I like a lot. Um, actually, one of my favorite. It, there was this one, um, the robotics one, which eventually got some money from Piyush Pansal. I like that. I thought that was interesting, just in terms of what oh, was yeah. happening. I, I know Sujita has a long list of ones she liked. I, I have a actually I don't even pay attention to the pitches as much as I do to like the jokes that are coming out. Um, uh, and I end up oh. watching Shark Tank very passively. Uh, so off the top of my head, I can't. I, I really like what's coming up in the EV space. Like there are a couple of EV like yeah. bikes and the, uh, that the Nasics people, the scooter, yeah. the yeah, modular yeah, yeah. scooter with the Correct. fridge and all in the back. Yeah, 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 yeah which yeah, was super really interesting. Uh, and also yeah. I think the other thing that I really like is just like localization of on of like on of products. So for example, as I said, you know, one guy making banana chips. Uh, then there was this um, yeah, really interesting Kerala. couple that didn't get yeah. selected. Uh, you know, uh, who were basically packaging like uh, Pune's desserts and Pune ki kachori and this that and the other, uh, and selling yeah. it all across India. So I, I love the localization of uh, you know products and entrepreneurs. It's 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 really nice to you know watch a show where uh, where so much diversity is celebrated versus you know it being a a, a hindrance um, as what ends up happening. They ask you to centralize okay. your product all over the world so that it's more homogeneous for everybody. And yet, the ones that really do well are those who stay local and have their own yeah. flavor and retain that, and yet get a bigger market in the end. It's, it's, it's like a paradox. And, and a great awesome. example over here is actually ID Fresh. Um, I don't know if you guys have tracked their story, but yeah, yeah. phenomenal brand, right? Uh, uh, I love it. That dosa. And so innovative. And dosa you, you've things. seen the vada thing yeah. they made, which is the by far the most interesting thing product innovation I've seen. What's where, the taste like? It's, it's very excellent. nice. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Product. Very good. Yeah. And I'm like. I'm guilty, so I'm like I'm telling you the taste is great. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's all about the taste, all said and done. Yeah, Sorry yeah. to say, uh, yeah, after yeah, a little word of mouth, sure. it'll be like yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so us. in I just remember something. So in Shark Tank uh, US, there was once mm. uh, about seven years back or something. There was a person by the name of uh, James Martin who had come on uh, to sell Copa wines. Uh, basically, uh, Copa wines is like a, a wine in a cup. Uh, mm. So basically, his idea was cup that cup of wine, yeah, Copa. Huh? Yeah, cup of wine. People don't want yeah. to buy entire bottles and all. Uh, don't always want to buy, so you can just take a cup of wine, uh, buy the cup of wine, and take the glass and all with you as you go walk around if you want to drink. And uh, everyone thought it was a terrible idea. Like Mark Kevin Cuban, bought into it. Yeah, no, Kevin also initially. I think he was the, he's a sommelier. Right? He's the guy with the wine stuff. Yeah, but he also he he tasted the wine and he hated it. He's like, I the wine is disgusting. Okay, so people like kept shitting on him the entire time he was there, and so he left without a deal. He came back like a few years later, and 
uh, now his company from a few hundred thousand in profit went to like five, had uh, sorry few hundred thousand day in sales had done more than five million dollars in sales. Okay, so mm-hmm. he's already like a success, and he comes back. He's just so they're like uh, okay, they're like okay, uh, yeah, okay, we know we made like a bad deal. And this guy just sipping on his wine. They're giving him deals after deal. Like, no, I don't need you guys anymore. <laughs> I'm just here to <laughs> basically like this, <laughs> this, uh, this glow. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. They're giving him great deals, and he's just sipping. You're yeah. like, let me think about. It. Mm, no, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> so that was oh, it. Really I actually fun. watched the Kevin Hart episode in the in the American. Oh, Shark great! Tank. I just yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he 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 came in as a as a guest shark in one episode. Kevin Hart. Um, But he's yeah, an he entrepreneur. Is he an entrepreneur? Uh, he, no, he has yeah, a investor, uh, he, he has a production yeah, yeah. company and he has a venture yeah. company oh, as well. Oh, that, he's on venture okay. investing. Oh, he does. Yeah. And he funds this this really interesting startup where these guys think you know you're eating and snacking all the time in front of your computer and you end up getting like you know your your snack dust all over the keyboard etc. These guys invented this one thing you can put on top of your fingers so that's like it's like tweezers on top of your fingers so you can use that to take the snack so your fingers stay clean. Ah, uh, yet you can take the snack into your mouth, and so Kevin and I think uh, uh, Laurie together combine and and fund it. So I'm like, that's the great idea. It's so random, but I can still see people buying it. Like it's it's so it's it's stupidly fun. So I think uh, some of these stupidly fun ones are also like great to see in these shows, just in terms of seeing what people come up with. Yeah, it also right. goes with his personality because it's ridiculous, eccentric, silly, all yeah. that. I can see that it's almost yeah. like a brand endorsement for himself. In a sense, that's why he, that, that's looks, what he pitched. He said yeah. that's why they choose him. So there were three people. Uh, Mr. Wonderful was trying to get in. And these two are trying to get in, and Kevin had said, "Do you not realize that I'm the perfect person to push this out from a marketing standpoint?" And they said, "Sold." So that's literally how he got the deal. There you go. All right, Silvery, we're running out of time. I haven't done any. Yes, yes, yes. Please, people please. are writing uh, in wanting to become millionaires. I've seen heard Sushita's entire commentary: forty under forty, thirty under thirty, twenty under twenty. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next, uh, AMA question comes in from Shoik Bachchi. He says, "Many of my friends work in advertising, and they all complain about long working hours and no work-life balance. Do you think this affects their creativity as their brain is fatigued?" This is pre-pandemic, um, I presume, in a sense. Or even post-pandemic, also. Even it's, post-pandemic. It's, people still. We've actually seen, uh, in many cases have actually ended up working longer hours um, in the pandemic because you're at home, right? So, I think that long hours has always been a problem with the industry. Always try to fight it. I feel that what you need to kind of do is to make sure that people get enough breaks. I don't think you can take away long but, hours, uh, but you, what you can do is give people more breaks often enough. Uh, is the only way to kind of beat I've, it. I've mentioned this a few times. Uh, I don't know if you know about it. This Parkinson's law, not Parkinson's mm. uh, the disease, which is the famous mm. thing where basically you come up with this point that how many hours you're given for a task, that's how long you'll uh, take to do it. If I yeah, give you three yeah, days, you'll take three true. days. If I give you three hours, you'll take three hours. My personal belief yeah. with Indians are we're just too slow. We, we, why do you need a whole shift to shoot things? Sometimes you don't. We just spend too much yeah. time looking at the background, looking at the setup, having chai. I mean, you should come back with all guns blazing, start work and finish it. I think we should all do our work. This podcast should be ten minutes. It's too long. Some of uh, some of our guys started doing one thing, and it, it came actually from Pooja, um, uh, who's who's our CEO and also my wife. Um, and um, in in, in that second. order of big of, mistake. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah! Huh? Huge. Can't come back from huh? that one, bro. I, C- I, I call her the CEO of my life. That's what I call her. So, like, yeah, you um, can try. That's a, that's a good save. You may <laughs> you may work with that. Yes, please. <laughs> uh and um, she actually says that if you if you if somebody asks you to do something um post like let's say 8 p.m. 9 p.m. if you don't ask, can we just do pick this up tomorrow? And you think that you have to do it then? Um, you never ask. So some often times, if you ask that, what we realize is most people will say, okay, that's fine. Let's pick it up tomorrow because people instinctively send you something. um to do be the client be it someone else you're working with but if you say that can we pick it up tomorrow um that's how you kind of bring in more balance uh, but i do you do need more rest to get more creative i agree with that 100% this is why i love australia i remember when we went to do an ad many years ago in australia uh, we reached because of the time difference or whatever whatever we reached about 5 in the evening australian time the moment our production guy tried to call the the unit that was working on the ad nobody picked up the phone after 5:30 nobody picked up the phone they just didn't I and mean, we couldn't get in touch with a single person we was in india it would never happen you can call at 12 you can call at 2 you can call at 4 didn't pick up the phone till the next morning that's it and they didn't apologize for it or anything and in spite of being mm-hmm. novak djokovic's greatest fan i got to say this i love australia <laughs> love, it, love it yeah sorry let's go yeah next one comes in from harvest kasar he says hello all do you see india ready to host the olympic games since india has successfully hosted asian games commonwealth games and fifa under 17 world cup so jira come on you're the one here uh i don't think we successfully hosted any of this i'm sorry guys <laughs> uh, i think gis gis pitke we got there um uh, but uh, uh no i i i don't think we are and i think you know just from like a cost and a money perspective i don't think it's necessary either uh, if you just look at it historically uh, any uh, sorry but developing country that's ever picked up the baton of uh, hosting the olympic games it hasn't worked out for it hasn't worked out well for their balance sheets at give all. an example brazil 
uh, Greece. It was a flop. Money wise. Uh, no, uh, from a uh, basically the. So what do you what do you look for with the Olympics, right? Uh, ideally, by hosting the Olympics, you should see a surge in Business. travelers or tourists come exactly. Yeah. But uh, two questions to answer over here is one: How relevant are the Olympics? Uh, from a sporting events perspective and we could argue this to death but um if you look at any data even of in the indian context on how much time was spent or how many i, I mean bhuvan bhams content gets more views than olympics it's just that's just the tragedy of the situation right um uh, he's a uh, lovely guy i'm okay with that no yeah. he he is a he is a lovely guy but that's what the point is right like money will go where the eyeballs are so i think i think the i, I think the largest sort of question to answer over here is is the olympics designed in a way where it can even pull the kind of eyeballs that are, that is needed for it to be a money making engine not only from for the, for broadcasters but also for the country that's hosting it and the second is does the country itself have a culture where the you know facilities that are created can be used for things over a period of time Going further, uh, yeah. and, and i mean look at the if you look at the stadiums in india they're actually in delhi specifically they're actually fairly well Dr. built Dora, what stadium. are they being used for man yeah. they're being used to host like you weddings. know theaters and weddings like that that's what's happening right now so i think the tragedy of the situation is it's uh, uh, you know we do a good job to get to point x but what we are not good at is scaling so you know if if you built all of this equipment and these training grounds what are you really doing to get people uh, back into them again and i think that's where things you know really go for a toss so from a money perspective uh, i don't know man i i don't think hosting the uh, unfortunately because i think we are all stuck with the shosha that happens and you know tamasha mm-hmm. that happens and so we presume ki this fantastic and hockey may get eyeballs as you said four five sports get eyeballs and that's enough for us to think it's successful but what you're saying is the bottom line uh, when you look at the balance sheet and how potentially is it used or not they're just dead elephants after that sorry to use that phrase also what we put a- around it right um did you guys watch the the series i think in the states which was um, which is kevin hart and um, uh, snoop dog um, commenting on the olympics right so there's an entire series yeah, where yeah i saw a bit of that olympic yeah. highlights and them talking about so we also don't make it entertaining so i feel that this if yeah. you see opportunity in creating content around it and people start enjoying it then maybe think about hosting it first get yeah. the audience in then kind of build it or i guess that's another way to look at it i think ipl is your single you know what i mean like that's like the poster child of how to sell sports yeah. to yeah. even yeah. dumbasses yeah. like me who have yeah. no but it's but it's true like at the end of the day all of this shit needs to be hockey footy they all followed now kabaddi now volleyball exactly. they all and exactly. in fact the world has followed us if you look at the yeah. cricketing world they followed us we started in its uh, you know and poor lalit modi who started everything the christopher columbus of the sport is sitting there with his lisp uh, not getting appreciated thank you for calling but nobody cares about me and i think that's unfair very unfair unsung hero yeah all right should we take yeah, one so last one that's why sorry yeah, go on sure. no no i was saying that that's my uh, tldr on why we should not host the olympics No, I think it's a very fair point because we don't realize that uh, that what happens post the Olympics. We always thought the commerce really goes up. People visit the country, like say Japan. Now because of pandemic, that won't happen. But I would think in Brazil at that point, and then they had the World Cup, uh, you know, year or two after that as well, FIFA. So I mean, didn't they get a fill up in business, tourists, traffic, uh, people investing in because suddenly you know the country better. All these stadiums and all beyond Maracana are known to other people because of the Olympics. Then football to follow, and it's really a shame that if that didn't happen, all the investment that that's like the yeah. other side of it. You invest. Wasted so much time, material, yeah. people, vision, and you get nothing. We have weddings. The Sharma is getting married at Talkatora swimming pool. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yep. But of course, they did breaststroke on the Suhagra. <laughs> Watch it. There's a limit. You draw the line here. So she said, "You started it. I can't get letters." She started it. Silvi, it's all fair game now, boss. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Half the half the shows about pubic hair and male uh, appendage references. You can check. You can just Google it. All right. Last one. Last one. All right. Uh, SJ has asked. Uh, this is for Varun. He says. Is everything is out of syllabus? The next atomic habits. Um, Ooh, not fan, really. God. um God. Yeah, great for reference. I, I I hope it sells as much as atomic he's, habits. He's caught off guard now. He he doesn't like praise. It's a little difficult to deal with. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's actually one of the books I referenced when while writing the book as well. Um, I was like, how how did he kind of work? So I actually followed what James Clear and uh, another writer called Ryan Holiday how they how they write. So I actually followed their system of writing to write the book. So. is it like atomic habits i followed the same process so only time will tell i guess but uh, yeah that's that's my answer so to this it's not streams of consciousness it's yes. conscious consciousness conscious consciousness fair enough you should already well, one of you spoke about the other saying that they are both the streams of consciousness pat as well as the conscious consciousness okay good to know so i said i hope you're following this episode eh? there were very intellectual moments from time to time yeah, absolutely. hard for me to even uh, distinguish between the puerile and the intellectual because i don't know in my head it's all messed up now it's gone forever absolutely. but okay, can we do one quick yeah. last yeah. one we can we can prithvi has a oh. question for suchita 
and actually for everyone he's, uh, he says agree with suchita on india becoming a sourcing hub but india is at least 20 years behind in infrastructure any comments holistically yeah i think the big challenge with india right now is um, and not to you know take china as an example because there's so much of china which is problematic you know unto itself but i think what's lacking right now given the number of people and also generally the amount of poverty that continues to exist in our country and that you know to date uh, 60% of our country is still entrenched in all things uh, agrarian none of that's really changed i think for there to be a dramatic uh, you know difference uh, uh, i i won't say we need to i i don't think we can afford to go the china route but i do think there has to be some setting off like long term visions and long term goals and i think where i'll give credit where it's due is just a focus on um and digital india and startup india that's happened over the past couple of years you know uh, i i mean i am no um uh, i i i i'm very vocally critical about all the things that you know have have gone wrong in the past uh, you know 6 to 10 odd years but uh, i think the two long term investments that have played out well is just generally digitization uh, i think i i think that we were able to create a stack like upi has been super interesting to see um and i think just generally investments in uh, you know uh, calling 16th of jan national startup day all of these are all, all of these are indicators to you know the real unlockers of where success could come for our country you know uh, i'm 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 trying to be as politically correct as i can uh, <laughs> uh, while i sort of run through this question but but i i think where i land at is uh, you know there unfortunately there has to be some amount of like long term thinking that doesn't get thrown off by you know political parties changing or you know a uh, general you know nationalistic priorities changing uh, and i think that is possible if you involve the right uh you know private individuals private enterprises in seeing things through as we've seen with digital india and startup india more specifically so uh, i i think that's as politically correct as i can be with respect to this so governments don't scuttle the ship is what you're saying and i mean state governments as Please well don't. so i say governments yes okay Please fair don't. enough i think that's the, that's the biggest problem we've always had the political interference which which doesn't follow a pattern it just up and down it can come it cannot come then you suddenly have great visionaries a few of them at least and then again you have the charlatans and brings down everything and then the foreign man the foreign investor is scared because of all yeah. these experiences yeah. uh, at mtv and channel v the terrible examples to give i think they learned the hard way yeah <laughs> especially when they had their first audit from singapore i remember it was yeah. stunned uh, both parties were stunned. what is this yeah exactly kya hai uh, audit <laughs> <laughs> Wrote it on Friday, the thirty first of December. <laughs> okay, cool. Listen, guys, it's been great talking to you. Just a quick reminder of the book, which is out. Everything out of out. Everything out of syllabus. Everything out of syllabus. Is that right? Everything is out of syllabus. Everything is out of syllabus. It's not my fault. It's what it says on the paper here, <laughs> uh, which is available on Amazon. dot in. And of course, Suchita has got all the lovely show that you've got to watch. LBB Little Black Book and uh, their ideas and thoughts. Their shows together. Please check it out. Uh, if you want to be successful, this is the place to be. They guarantee you success. Within five years of listening to the podcast, am I right, guys? Is that a fair assumption? Yes. Otherwise, you get a refund on your life. That's what yes. happens. No, I, I'll just I'll give a rider. The five years is uh, not uh, exactly consecutive. You will tell them which of the five years that happens. Twenty-two. Like <laughs> then you go to twenty-seven is the second year. Thirty-two is the third year. It's like that. So Amit yeah, Doshi will pay the bills. Amit Doshi will pay the bills. <laughs> that's when. That's when Amit Doshi can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> 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 Okay. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you. We need you. Send us your questions on Twitter. On Cyrus says in, or you can email us, even if you're not female, on what Cyrus says at gmail dot com. Habits, routines. How exactly do they help us get better? Well, to simplify it for you, tune in to the Habit Coach podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, and I'm going to be here to help you get better daily with some simple, easy to do habits that you can easily adapt to your life. So, tune in to the Habit Coach podcast from Monday to Friday because I believe that awesome lives start with awesome habits. Eventually, you'll see the end of your childhood. Get accustomed to womanhood. Enjoy the experience of sisterhood. Might get to wifehood or not. Choose motherhood or not. You'll learn to define your personhood. Earn a livelihood. Change the neighborhood and get rid of the falsehood that life post academia is easy. So join me, Ritasha, and me, Ayushi, on a journey from station starting point to station um what now? Next station. Pudding station and hopefully Agla station. 
adulthood. Fresh episodes out every Thursday.